guys, I'm Rita. Today I'm going to show you how to find your writing process. My name is Rita Slania. I am the author of Harbor Excursions, but that book never would have happened if I didn't have my own writing process. And finding your own writing process take some trial and error. What works for me may not work for you. But today I'm going to take you through a journey of my writing process as well as offer you some tips that may help you in your journey to finding your own writing process. I'm getting that book written. In my day-to-day -day vernacular, I tend to throw around the word regimented frequently. I mean a whole hell of a lot. I have a combination personality type, but typically when I'm writing, my type A tends to come out and I'm extremely by the book as far as my scheduling goes. Now, as far as how I write, yeah, sometimes I end a sentence with a preposition. But when it comes to task building, implementation of ideas, getting things on the page, orchestrating some sort of schedule that gets me through any project, this whole regimentation thing, But these are the things that sort of help me gain success in what I'm trying to do on any of my projects. I know. Oh. <laughs> While I was writing Harbor Excursions, that story sort of wrote itself. I started with one idea and built upon that. And it, it just kept growing into this evolving, complicated story. And the words sort of jumped on the page all by themselves. But I never would have gotten there if I wouldn't somehow regimented to some degree. And that means even I needed a regimented writing process that worked for myself. Try to write at the same time every day for the amount of time that you want to write every day. For me, I get up around 4 or 5 a.m. and I write with my cup of coffee in hand for about an hour and a half to two hours. It just depends on if I'm going to write 2,000 words per day or not. Currently, I am in between novels, so I am not writing on a daily basis. But typically, I like to be up before the birds are chirping and before there is any sign of life outside so that I can just quietly let my brain peruse the pages of my document. So regardless, if you are an early bird or a night owl, schedule yourself some time to write that is daily and consistent. Tip number two, laptop, notepad, location, place. Make sure you are writing in the same place, in the same manner, with the same tools each time you sit down to write. This consistency will stop your brain from being distracted from silly nuances like, where's my pen? What happened to my notepad? Where did that document go? <laughs> Keep it consistent, whether it's on your porch, in your bed, at a desktop with a book light at, no. Whether it's on the porch, at your desk, in the bed with a book light, keep a consistent spot to write. Tip number three, personalize your space. Like I said, I like to get up at 4 a.m., get my coffee, grab my laptop, and hunker down on the couch and write every day. This is my process during novel writing time. My space is personalized. Now, sidebar to that is that it somewhat fluctuates for me when I'm in between books and I'm still writing my blog. My blog is still consistently going every week as well as doing the video uploads also. So I'm not only blog writing and novel writing, but I'm also screenwriting these videos every week as well. However, when I'm in between books or when I am working on a book or in between books, those schedules are highly regimented and static. So to recap, integrating your top three steps, time, 
place and personalizing your space will minimize the distractions for your brain, which will help your brain generate those creative juices when you sit down to write. Tip number four. So there's sort of two parts to this. Sometimes when you write a story, the magic just happens. Your characters show up, the story sort of writes itself, it takes you on a journey you didn't even see coming, and you just follow the story as you write it. Alternatively, I will need to create an outline first. And in an outline, you want to map out your location, your characters, and what they're doing. The profile of the characters, and what their world looks like. Once you've mapped out even a vague outline, some of the other details will fall into place and now you can actually get started writing. So for my writing process, when I'm outlining or when I'm mid-story and my characters start getting a little complicated, I actually have a cork board with old school index cards and push pins and pictures that I also put up for character profiles, explanations on the index cards, I also organize them so that I know where they are and what they're doing in each chapter of my story. I also utilize yarn, different colored yarn for each character to map out one thing to another and how they intertwine with other characters' locations and the like. It gives me a much more direct visual as if I was storyboarding. And I'll just repeat this process with locations and subplots as they manifest themselves as my story moves along. Side note, Scrivener has a tool in their notes or notebook section, I can't recall what it's called right now, but it is also the same type of visual with note cards and a cork board and pictures that you can put into the program. I really like that. Scrivener is great. I love it for the purpose that I use it for with my storyboarding and keeping notes. Tip number five. Word count, genre, size of book. DIYformats.com is a good reference to input your manuscript as you're writing. It puts it automatically into the format you have chosen for the trim size of your book, word count, etc. You need to find out how many words you're even writing. You can do this by looking up genre. If you're writing romance, 80,000 words. You're doing novella, 40,000 words, 35 to 45,000 words. Um, young adult, I think that's somewhere in between 40 and 60,000 words. You get the idea. Do your research, find out how many words you're going to be doing, figure out the trim size of your book. This is going to help you figure out how many words you're going to need to write per day from start to finish. An example would be Harbor Excursions. It is a novella, it is a six by nine trim size on the book. I knew that I had to write X amount of words per day to fit the trim size for the 40,000 words. I wrote about 1,500 words a day on that, which got me finished, I think, in four months from start to finish on that manuscript. Tip number six, enjoy it and relax. Writing is a fun endeavor. It's not meant to stress you out. Your first draft is never gonna be good. Never. Not even Stephen King submits a first draft to his publisher. The first draft is where you're allowed to make your mistakes. You just want to get the words on the page. You're not worried about grammar, plot holes, right now in the first draft. These are things you can worry about in your revisions. Some revisions you may need two, you may need three, you may be omitting characters, you may be adding scenes. You never know what an editor is gonna tell you you're gonna need to fix. So just enjoy it, get the words out there, I call it word vomit, and get it written. Last but not least, the lucky tip number seven. Put that put damn manuscript away. away. Seriously, once you've written the book, put it away at least two to three weeks. I put Harbor Excursions away literally for years before I looked at it again and was ready to publish that baby. 
you've got to forget about what you wrote so you can get back in there, edit, get it published. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, comment, and rate. Hit the bell below to get alerts for every time we upload a new video. Also, make sure you check out freedaslanina.com for tips, updates, and even some free downloads. You might want to check that out too. Also, if you have any feedback, questions, or suggestions, let us know. Be sure to pick up your copy of Harbor Excursions, available wherever books are sold. If they do not have it on the shelf at your local bookstore or Barnes & Noble, make sure you ask them to order it because they can. It's also available in ebook formats, Nook, Kindle, and the like. Happy reading and happy writing!